everything's in here. So are you going to go with a tight shot on the uh, Hi. On the We're live, buddy. Hi, oh, guys. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. Welcome to my home. Um, so we're having a little tea party with my team. Uh, this is Roz. <laughs> Say hi. Hi. <laughs> and I love my team. So this is this is Roz, who a lot of you already know. Milena is behind the camera, but we'll be grabbing her soon. Danny's <laughs> behind the camera, but we're going to be grabbing him soon. And this is Audrey, who's a new member of my team. She's going to be helping me with PR and public relations. Say hi, Audrey. <laughs> so welcome to my home. We're just about to have tea. Um, so bear with me a minute. I'm going to keep talking while I bring my teapot out and then I'm going to actually also bring Milena to the front because people often ask me about the work and wait, Danny, people love to see you. Danny's got like a fan club of his own, I've noticed. They recognize him by the top of his head. <laughs> <laughs> am, am I in frame? Looks familiar. <laughs> no, the top of Barely. his head looks familiar. Let me see a good shine. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Welcome to our tea party. It's Saturday afternoon. No, no it's oh, Friday. It's Friday it's afternoon, Friday. and we're all having a tea party over here. So if you so. like tea, stand by. <laughs> Anita's actually going to be serving. What's she serving? Chai. Latte. Chai. My homemade special chai. So I'm going to be doing the chai for everyone. Oh, and this beautiful picture here, this this photo, was taken by my, my dear friend Rick Burr, Richard Burr, and I love it. And uh, he sent it to me, and that was, I mean, that was just, yeah, it's awesome. So I, I made my special chai, and then we've got these wonderful, delicious cakes and macaroons. But um, so today, you know what I wanted to talk about? I wanted to talk about, we get a lot of people writing in saying, how do I love myself? I always talk about the importance of loving ourselves, but people still keep asking me, how do I love myself? So that's what I wanted to talk about. Um, so wait, let me pour the tea first for everybody. Oh, you're not having tea. <laughs> <laughs> Who would like some tea? I would. Yay. Milena, okay. show yourself in front of the camera. Please. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> so this is Milena who takes care of all my social media. And it's because of her that you guys get to see me on Facebook and we have all our posts and everything. Oh, and your questions are welcome today. So Milena is going to shout out the questions so you can ask me absolutely anything. Um, so today I wanted to talk about how to love yourself and why it's important to love yourself. So here's what I, how I want you to think about it. So imagine that you are an energetic being and when you love yourself, your energy is high. So let me backtrack this a bit. <clears throat> Many of you know that um, your energy, like when you walk into a room, your energy affects the people around you. For example, if you have someone really happy walk into a room, their very presence makes everyone else around them really happy. But if you have someone who's really depressed walk into a room, their presence can actually bring down the energy of everyone around them. And most people wouldn't argue with that because many, um, because many, many um, tests have already been done to prove that. So, for example, there was once a, an actual test done where they put, uh, where these people put 30 metronomes into a room and they just set these metronomes off at different times randomly and after about 10, 15 minutes, all these metronomes started uh, moving or tick-tocking at the same time. They all aligned themselves and basically they entrained themselves to each other. Um, another experiment was done where a bunch of young women, about five or six young women, shared an apartment together and after a few months, <clears throat> their monthly cycle started to align. So they were all menstruating at the same time. So the many, many experiments have been done to show how we all align ourselves to each other and the people around us in our environment. So now if you're in an environment where everybody is really sad, really depressed, really angry, you will, after a period of time, align yourself to that surrounding energy. But if you are someone who has very strong and uplifting energy and happy energy, other people around you will align themselves to you. 
So the more you love yourself, the more that your energy is strong and happy and uplifting. Because the more you love yourself, the more you will do the things to honor who you are. The more you will do the things that feel joyful to you. Basically, loving yourself means uplifting yourself, keeping your energy high, doing the things that make you happy. And the more you do that, your very presence uplifts other people. Just your very presence without you even having to do anything. At the same time though, if you are someone who believes that it's selfish to love yourself and you believe that you shouldn't be taking care of yourself or doing things yourself, and let's say your energy slowly gets drained because you're always judging yourself, beating yourself up, what happens when our energy is drained, we are reliant on other people's energy. So when somebody who's got really drained energy walks into a room, they then need other people's energy to lift them up. So we're basically sucking other people's energy. So now if you think of it this way, is it more selfish to love yourself or not? It's actually more selfish not to because then you are dependent on other people's energy. This is why it's so important to love yourself. So how do you love yourself? How do you preserve your energy? How do you uplift your energy? It's different for different people. But if you're somebody who's super sensitive, who's a bit of a people pleaser, a bit of a doormat, one of the first things I would ask you to do is to learn to say no. Learn, <clears throat> excuse me, learn to say no to the things that are not you and to say no just for the sake of making other people happy. Those are the things that bring you down and you're doing them just to please other people. So the first thing I would ask you to do if you want to learn to love yourself is to learn to say no. But maybe even before that, the first thing I want you to do is to be aware that the more you love yourself, the more energy, positive energy you emulate. The less you love yourself, the less positive energy you emulate and the more dependent you become on feeding on other people's energy. That's really important. So that's basically my message. And also if, when you love yourself, you will start to be aware what makes you happy, what makes you joyful, and you will start to do those things more and more. So now I'm happy to get to your questions. Do we have any great questions, Milena? We have a lot of great people on here sending love and thanking you for who you are. And Melissa says, Anita, your energy is so adorable. <laughs> Uh, Valerie's going to sip her iced coffee while we drink tea. And let's see. Um, let me get a question. Someone was asking the difference between the soul and the spirit and how do we energize each and love each entity? Okay, I don't really see a difference between the soul and the spirit. I see it as just two different ways of saying the same thing. But... I guess when, um, when I use those terms though, when I say soul, I talk about the inner part of you, that conscious part of you that still exists um, when you're in the physical body. But when I say spirit, then I'm usually talking about people who are no longer in the body. So in other words, your spirit, uh, when, it is, when your spirit is in a physical body, or when you are manifest as a physical being, then I call that spiritual part of you your soul. But when you are no longer in your physical being, then I call it a spirit. But I think it's pretty much the same thing. Valerie says, I do love myself, but still react in a judgmental way when I hear about others being awful to others. But I guess that's because you do, because you can't imagine being that way yourself. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's what I kind of call, um, in a way, righteous anger. And you just have to acknowledge it, honor it. And, and it's cool. It just means you, you know what behavior is not acceptable to you. And those kinds of feelings can actually help us to have a better world. Because the more that people love themselves, the more they're able to to discern what behavior is um, is not right or not good or is mistreating other people. Justin asks, when does loving yourself become too much or selfish? Never, never. Our world right now is suffering from lack of self-love, lack of love. And um, I think that 
our it's a great question Justin by the way it's a really good question because a lot of people worry about this and so I'm glad you asked it and that fear that fear of it being selfish to love ourselves is what prevents us from loving ourselves enough we uh, you see now and I want you to also think about this if you have a child if you have a pet do you ever worry about loving it too much never you never worry about loving your child too much there's no such thing if you have a partner or a spouse you think oh my god the more I love this person the more I love my child the better yet when it comes to ourselves loving ourselves we're worried about how much is too much and that is what prevents us from loving ourselves enough and the more you love yourselves the more that your energy is expanded so that it touches other people and your very presence helps them to feel uplifted without you doing anything but your concern when we are concerned about oh I don't want to love myself too much that is the energy we bring with us wherever we go and that is the energy that our children and our uh, peers and everyone else picks up on uh, Lola asks what would you say to a 21 year old who sees nothing that motivates her to live her life to find her authenticity or to love herself so usually when somebody that young is feeling that way I would really want them to find their purpose and find their passion for living so they need to get to know themselves and they need to have some space and freedom to do that also when people lose themselves <clears throat> this is the case with people who don't have a purpose young people like that or even people who are facing depression when people lose themselves it's because they've spent a lifetime trying to be something they're not they've spent a lifetime trying to please other people um, and follow rules and do things that don't come naturally to them and when we spend a lifetime trying to do things to please other people or because we fear disappointing other people we end up becoming someone who we aren't and when we are becoming someone we aren't when we are living a life that's not our own life being someone who we are not with the purpose of pleasing everyone else then the problems we attract are not our problems they are the problems of the person who we are trying to be or the people we're trying to be and that makes us feel very very defeated and it makes us feel lost and it makes us feel depressed and it makes it really hard for us to find our purpose because we don't know who we are so the first thing I do to help this 21 year old is maybe to share this video with them and let them hear what I just said and also I would encourage them to find out who they are and give them the freedom to find out who they are and the space with no judgment at all none whatsoever no expectations no feeling of you should be doing this you should do that or you'll disappoint people or you'll fail because as kids we grow up with all these parameters like if you don't do this you'll fail you should be doing that or you'll disappoint this person that's how kids lose themselves so I hope that's helpful Gigi asks how can I help my seven-year-old love himself he has no confidence and says he hates himself oh that's so sad I would try and find out what's happening at school is he getting picked on is he getting bullied and also we've um, Angie DeMuro um, and I Angie DeMuro my co-author and I have created a children's book and hopefully this book could help him it's um, it's called love a story of who you truly are and in fact just a moment I have a copy somewhere Roz if you could reach behind you right here on this bookshelf next to the stack of books on the right hand side grab it it's right there right there it's tucked in there yes great thank you yes thank you dear thank you. there so um, so we wrote this book specifically for children who have trouble loving themselves and children who are being bullied uh, and also you know it tells children that when they see someone being bullied to reach out to the child being bullied and to befriend them so um, so I plan to actually do a series of books and um, you know so whenever Angie is ready to do more I plan to do a series to help kids and help kids who are being bullied, kids who are depressed, kids 
who don't love themselves because it is so important to love yourself and so please do talk to your child and ask them what's going on at school and just real quick I want to let people know where they can get it we'll post a link in a little bit but they can get it on Amazon Amazon Global Amazon UK Amazon Canada yes that's great and so this book has been self-published so it's uh, currently only selling on Amazon so you know if uh, of course we're still open if there's a publisher that wants to pick it up we're still open to, totally open to looking at publishers and even though we've self-published it it's already been published and translated into Croatian language and I think currently is um, there is something being negotiated with my agent for either um, Spanish or Japanese and a couple more. So we're getting the publishers from other countries coming forward, but nobody has, uh, so it hasn't been published in English, So, but it's available on Amazon. Yeah. Loretto uh, just said that he gave a dozen of the love book to his spiritual center. The teachers and children love it. Oh, thank you, Loretto. <laughs> thank you. Aya asks, how can we help kids that have parents that drain their energy? Mm. That's a tough one. That's a tough one. So, so first of all, I would want the parents to know, uh, the kids to know, I would want the kids to know it's not their parents' fault. The parents are doing the best they can. They truly are. And the reason the parents are draining their kids' energy is because the parents' energy is drained. And here's a cycle that we fall into, particularly people of my generation and older, is that we always believed that we had to sacrifice ourselves for our children. What we didn't realize at the time is that when we sacrifice ourselves, we are showing up for our kids with drained energy and when we do that we're actually leeching their energy so this is why i always tell parents i always tell caregivers nurses doctors hospice workers you have to look after yourself it is not selfish to do so because if you don't then you are actually draining your patient's energy, your kid's energy. You're not giving them, you're taking from them while believing you're giving them. So you must take care of yourself. So now if you are a kid, and if you're an adult kid of a parent who drains your energy, you have to encourage your parents to find their joy, to live their lives in, in joy and happiness. Help them to find their purpose. Tell them to be happy. Tell them they don't need to sacrifice themselves. Tell them that what would make you happy is to see them happy. That's what you need to do as kids. So thanks for that great question. I'm gonna butcher this name. I'm sorry. Um, Shanali or Shanalia asks, how do we stay positive and not transfer our trauma and sadness onto other people as we are going through trauma and loss, such as from the murder of a loved one? Oh, that's a tough one. Going through murder of a loved one is a really tough, tough one. So first of all, I would take away the pressure of trying to stay positive. So don't force yourself to stay positive because you're going through something so hard. The first thing is to accept what you're feeling. And I don't mean necessarily accept what's happened. You may not be ready to accept that. But accept what you're feeling, accept the pain, the hurt, the confusion, the fear. Don't squash it down, don't suppress it. That is what it means to love yourself. It's so important to know that, that when you love yourself, you don't judge your fears. You don't judge even negative feelings. You see, this is why I'm not someone that keeps saying that you have to be positive all the time. It's not important to be positive. It's important to be yourself. It's important to love yourself. Um, I have very different views on what it means to be positive, but I'll get into that in a whole separate video. But while you are going through this, I want you to take care of yourself. Do what it takes to heal your pain. And even if it sometimes feels like you're going two steps forward, one step back, or one step forward, two steps back, it's okay. This is your journey. And only hang with people who give you the space to be who you are. If it drains you to be with other people, or if you feel you have to put on an act or a face or be positive for other people and that's draining you, then don't be with them and it's okay. You'll eventually come out of it, but just be with who you are right now. Imagine 
if your best friend was going through what you were going through you would want them to heal you would give them the space to heal treat yourself like you're treating your best friend or a loved one so be kind to yourself right now sky says she's always wanted to know when you came back from your nde was your pain gone immediately or did it disappear over the weeks as you loved your body and healed so um there's two elements here number one was emotionally all the fear was gone. Emotionally, I was euphoric, completely euphoric. That euphoria lightened the pain dramatically. So although I could feel discomfort in my body, I wasn't, it wasn't excruciating pain. I think the worst pain was when the doctors were poking needles into me, trying to take the test. They were causing the pain. But the pain from my actual physical ailments they were, I could feel it reducing every day. So even though the discomfort was there, I could actually feel it on a daily basis getting less and less and less. And that felt really good. That made me even more euphoric. We have a couple people asking a very similar question. One is asking, how do I find out what I really want? Someone is saying they don't see their purpose. Uh, how, how do you, I know my purpose in life? Okay, so the first thing is, stop trying to look for a purpose so i know this sounds strange it sounds like the opposite of what you're trying to do but this is the dichotomy your purpose appears before you when you are being yourself when you are being authentic don't try to search for the purpose because if you try to search for it you don't know what you're looking for your purpose could be something that you can't even imagine yet the purpose I follow today, I, f I just learned to be myself and my purpose unfolded before me. If I had to figure it out, if I had to look for it, I would have had no clue where to start, how to do it. I really would have had no clue at all. So you have to let your purpose unfold before you. So here's the first step in trying to find out who you are and trying to be authentic. The first thing to do is what I said earlier, say no to what is not you. You can say no in gentle ways, but start asking yourself, what am I doing that doesn't feel authentic? It doesn't feel like it's me. And I'm just doing it because, and I'm just doing it because um, I don't want to disappoint other people, or I'm doing it because I think it's a nice thing to do or the right thing to do. But the question is, is it coming from your heart? Is it what you want to do? Is it part of following your passion? And if the answer is no, that I'm doing it because I don't want to disappoint other people, I'm doing it because I want to fit in, I'm doing it because I'm afraid a better job won't come along, I'm doing it for these reasons, then you have to start letting go of things like that. Because if you are filling up your mind, your heart, your time with things that are not you, then the things that are meant for you can't come into your life because there's no space. So you have to first start by letting go of what is not me. Say no instead of yes whenever you mean no. Once you start doing that and you're creating a little bit of space, the second thing to do is to look at your receiving channels. Many people are really good at giving, particularly people like those who are attracted to my work and those who are also people pleasers and doormats and super sensitive people. You're very good at giving and giving of yourself, but you're terrible at receiving. I want you to start to learn to receive. Receive the gifts of the universe. Gifts from the universe come through other people. We are the channels for God or for universal energy. So when people around you are kind to you and are gifting you, receive. Don't feel immediately obligated that you have to give back because I'm sure that's how many of you feel. So check that you're good at receiving. Those are the two things. As you develop those two things, you start to be more authentic and your purpose will unfold before you. Beautiful. Trust me, it works. <laughs> Would you like to do a couple more? Okay, let's do a couple okay. more. Um, Jennifer asks, what if a reputable psychic prediction scares us, such as a breakup or a child being born and, and the prediction they were given make, you know, makes them scared? Oh gosh. So um, I prefer not, to, this is why I prefer not to have predictions. One of the things that psychics uh, are able to do is they're able to read the energy around you of where you are now. But what they tell you is not set in stone. It's not set in stone. If you don't like what they're telling you, 
you can change it because all they are doing is telling you read all they're doing is reading the energy field that you're in now that's what but you can change it at any time by changing the way you feel the way you operate in this world by loving yourself more by being more authentic all these kinds of things can change your energy field in an instant chances are you went to a psychic because your life wasn't going well anyway because very rarely do people go to psychics when their life is going fabulously and they're really happy and they're feeling in charge with their life. It's only when things are going awry. So when things are going awry, your energy field is a bit muddled and you're going in, in a weird direction. And that's what the psychic is reading. So please feel, please always know that when a psychic tells you something, they're reading your energy field, but it's not set in stone. It's more like um, a caution, a precaution, that if you keep going in this direction, this is what you're heading for. So what they're giving you is like, it's like a war, it's, it's good news. In fact, it's like telling you before it happens. So they're pre-warning you, you have time to change your direction if you don't want it to happen. Mary asks, she says, my friend has cancer, how to talk to her, what do I say? Give her my book, Dying to Be Me. <laughs> I really said it all in that book. I really have. And there's so much I would tell you to tell her. There is so much. I also have other YouTube videos. I have a YouTube video that uh, is called something like, what would I do differently if I knew then what I know, what I know now about illness? So I would suggest you share that YouTube video with her. And of the two books, I would say Dying to Be Me is the one that would really help her. And people sometimes ask me um, if I want to read your book, which one should I read? Well, Dying to Be Me is about the journey through cancer and the healing and why I believed I healed. And the second book, What If This Is Heaven, is really about living life with the beliefs I now have as a result of that experience because I see life completely differently. So, and um, so- Would everyone like to come sit down? Oh yes, let's all table. come in for this last frame. Come on, everybody. Come to the table. Come, team. come on, guys. So this is my amazing team. So what I want to say also is that I would not be able to do what I do without these guys. I really, really wouldn't be able to do what I do. Come on. <laughs> and Helena, you too. I've got to stop. I've got to stop the video. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Everyone want to say bye? Oh, I mean, stick your face in at least, Helena. Come on, before you say, yay! <laughs> <laughs> so this is my awesome team, and I really wouldn't be able to do what I do without them. Really. I mean, and, and they, they deserve the credit for everything I do. Okay. So, no. <laughs> yes. So, so we're about to, we're about to tuck into this this beautiful feast of this sugar feast. <laughs> Love you guys. Bye. 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 Bye.